Hi everyone, I'm answering a couple of questions about ozone therapy in the video today. Uh, just before jumping into the crux of the video, if you don't mind taking a quick moment to either like or share or subscribe or post a quick comment on the video, I'd really appreciate it. So thanks in advance for taking a second to do that. And as per usual, nothing I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. If you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. So the first question was about whether um, using nasal insufflations of ozone is more effective than nasal sprays for treating markers. Marcons. Um, Marcons is this type of uh, highly antibiotic resistant uh, staphylococcal infection in the sinuses, can affect people with mold illness, maybe other folks as well. Um, and there is some debate around whether Marcons is a bit of a you know, check engine light um, yeah, that's telling us that there's something else going on like mold or that the Marcons itself is actually pathogenic and causing a major problem. So there's some debate around that. Um, but uh, the, the long and short of it is um, Antimicrobial treatments are used to help get rid of Marcons. So you can you know, have a nasal culture, find Marcons, do treatment. Marcons is not coming up anymore. So um, can ozone be effective in that uh, realm? And how does it compare to nasal sprays? Um, <clears throat> to be perfectly frank, um, I have found that um, ozone insufflations, like clinically, like not based on any follow-up test results, et cetera, just when folks, you know, we have a diagnosis um, either of mold, yeast, maybe Marcons, maybe a combination of all, the, all of the above in the sinuses. Um, clinically, nasal insufflations with ozone, uh, and bearing in mind I'm talking about in my experience, um, ozone that's been percolated through olive oil first, so they're not, uh, the patient's not actually breathing in ozone, but rather this byproduct of ozone called an ozonide, which to my understanding is safe and not potentially harmful to the lungs. Uh, there are other protocols out there where there's direct ozone administered into the sinuses through different mechanisms. That's not, not something I use in practice. I've just too many concerns about um, potentially having a harmful effect on the airways or sinuses. I heard one horror story from a colleague down in the States where their patient was doing that and like they could they lost their sense of smell for like six months or something crazy like that. So anyways, the ozonide in inhalation seems to work well. It's, in my opinion, it's safer. Um, <clears throat> so that's the type of ozone inhalation I'm referring to. It's really an ozonide in inhalation. So in my experience, that um, method kind of pound for pound is a stronger treatment method than using a nasal spray. It's just infinitely less convenient than using a nasal spray if one does not have one's own ozone generator, which the vast majority of my patients do not. Getting good ones are quite expensive. Um, it's also time consuming to um, do an ozonite inhalation. So um, when patients are able to come in for those treatments or they just have a really you know pesky persistent sinus infection, um, I've found that the ozonite inhalations tend to work the best, but I have markedly more experience using uh, uh, using nasal sprays, whether it's you know diluted essential oil based nasal sprays, whether it's using silver based like the silver hydrosol nasal spray, whether it's using um, other types of agents like this combination we use that has uh, xylitol and uh, iodine and grapefruit seed extract in it, um, along with the biofilm that's up here called EDTA. So um, I, I, I would say that in my clinical experience, pound for pound, it's more effective to use a nasal, an ozonide inhalation. Um, however, um, the nasal sprays tend to work very well too. Um, in terms of you know patients that I've had where there's a positive Marcon's test, they've done a bunch of ozonide inhalations and then they have a negative Marcon's test. I don't think I've had any patients where we've used the ozonide inhalation that consistently where that was the only therapy to I know for a fact, actually, we don't have any patients where that was the only therapy we used. Um, in many of the patients who are using the, doing the ozonide inhalation, it's usually more as like an accelerator pedal to complement their nasal spray. Um, so they might come in once or twice a week for an ozonide inhalation, and then they're using their nasal spray on all the you know other days, kind of like all the opposing days, so to speak. So, um, so yeah. Uh, so to answer your question more succinctly, um, I don't have direct experience to say, you know, oh yes, this is pound for pound, definitely, or that. Uh, it's it's more effective than the nasal spray because I'm doing them in combination, but clinically the ozonide inhalations do pack a lot of punch and I think it's one of the strongest, if not the strongest thing we can do to help kill off infection in the sinuses. Uh, so thank you for the question. Um, there's another question about um, ozonated water um, in the same kind of thread of questions on my other YouTube video. And so uh, I thought I'd just quickly sneak that in here. And it's just a question about, uh, well, let me see if I can put it up here. Uh, do, do, do I have any thoughts on drinking ozonated water? So my thoughts, as I said in the comment, are that I have not prescribed it in practice and it tastes really gross. So we made some ozonated water years ago when I first got an ozone generator. My wife and I, and I think one of my staff members were like, oh, let's try drinking this. And it was just, it's just so gross. Ozone, like I love it. It's so therapeutically wonderful, but it uh, really, really kind of stinks and it doesn't smell any better when it's in water form. And 
big link between what we smell and what we taste and by golly it's just it's kind of gross so uh, kudos to those who can drink ozonated water with no problem um, some people do talk about using ozonated water to try to get these you know kind of the same types of systemic health benefits as you get from intravenous ozone um, or maybe rectal insufflations of ozone um, there is a very um, plausible mechanism by which um, rectal ozone can work systemically in the body and that it interacts with the um, fatty acid molecules and some other substances in the colon lining and then those get absorbed through the colon lining into the bloodstream and then go systemic and we have plenty of human clinical trials um, demonstrating the systemic efficacy of rectal insulations of ozone. So I have no doubt about that in my mind that uh, intravenous or rectal insulations of ozone are going to work systemically. Um, as far as drinking ozonated water goes, um, I haven't seen any studies looking at that practice leading to systemic benefits um, and I don't have any patients um, to date who have said oh yeah I started drinking ozonated water and I'm noticing all this reduced inflammation and immunomodulation and systemic antimicrobial effects and boosting up my antioxidant levels all the things that we see from intravenous ozone or, or rectal insufflations of ozone so I haven't seen that clinically and then when I put on my thinking cap I think well you know drinking this ozonated water so the O3 is getting in the stomach okay fair enough there's not really a lot of other places it could go except down into the stomach when you're drinking it. Um, but then what's going to happen to that O3, the, you know, the ozone, three oxygen atoms all bound together, what's going to happen to that when it um, drops into a pit of acid known as you know, the stomach contents, you know, all this HCL, this hydrochloric acid. Um, and I can't imagine a scenario where that ozone would somehow pass unadulterated from the stomach um, down into the small intestine and then you know, get absorbed the same kind of way that it gets absorbed in the large intestine with the rectal insufflation. Now maybe there's some mechanism by which the ozone could be absorbed across the lining of the stomach. Maybe, of course, we've got blood vessels around the stomach, you know, feeding those cells and whatnot. But I just feel like the um, potency of hydrochloric acid would neutralize that um, that ozone or, or create some other byproduct. I'm, I'm not a chemist, but you know, if we were to draw out the chemical equation, you know, O3 plus HCl leads to, I don't know, a couple of other byproducts that are probably not ozonides. Um, ozonides are created when ozone reacts with uh, fatty acids and amino acids and things like that. It, it, to my understanding, you don't get an ozonide when it reacts with hydrochloric acid. Um, so I, I'm, I'm skeptical about systemic health benefits from drinking ozonated water. Now, that being said, I have heard of some colleagues who recommend um, ozonated water for treating stomach infections like H. pylori, and I could I can see that maybe potentially helping, um, or potentially if somebody had, um, you know, like say an, an ulcer in their esophagus, or, or maybe they had an ulcer in their stomach, maybe drinking ozonated water would help with something like that. Um, I would personally be more inclined if I was going to prescribe something, uh, some ozone for those indications, I'd be more inclined to think about um, consuming ozonated oil, um, be it encapsulated or straight, um, like just somehow giving the oil down the hatch without putting it in a capsule, um, because I feel like that would have a better integrity that could buffer the effects of hydrochloric acid. I think it might work better, um, but honestly, I have other tools in my tool bag that are likely going to be more user-friendly and just have a better an established track record, I should say, where it's not my go-to to be thinking about using um, ozonated water, ozonated oil in those ways. So those are my thoughts about um, ozonated water. Um, but if uh, the person asking who asked the question or if anybody else uh, listening has used ozonated water, you've noticed benefits from it, um, by all means, please um, consider sharing that in the comment section. I'd love to hear about your experience. I suppose the one exception would be I, I may consider ozonated water for like, maybe topically for like helping to heal a wound. I usually recommend that patients use ozonated olive oil because it stays preserved for a very, very long time. Ozonated water, you have to keep making it fresh. So unless you have an ozone generator, it's challenging to get access to ozonated water. Um, but using it topically, um, I, I could certainly see benefits there. And I'm trying to remember now, there's tons of research studies, well, maybe not tons, but there have been many, you know, uh, maybe a couple of dozen uh, research studies looking at the effects of topical ozonated oil for various skin wound healing um, protocols and things like that. Um, I believe that there are some, a few, maybe two or three studies of memory serves um, of uh, researchers using um, ozonated water to help with wound healing as well. So topically, yeah, absolutely. Um, but just once it gets to the stomach, I'm, I'm skeptical that it might just break down into something else. Uh, any chemists listening, if you know what O3 plus HCl leads to, please post in the comment section. I'd love to know the answer to that. Thank you for the questions. Um, I will leave it there for now.